Welcome to Tats and Gats podcast episode number five. Five. My name is Alex. This is Lee. And uh, the podcast is sponsored by RKB Tactical and Inkedin Tools. So yeah, uh, our very special guest today is Andy, aka Tatted Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, thank you for being here. Oh yeah, thanks uh, for having very me. Very excited. Um, we like to start every episode out with a uh, EDC pocket dump, your your everyday carry. Um, so uh, yeah, what you got for us? All right. Well, uh, always with me, every day, every way. Uh, we'll let this guy hang over this way. Uh, G forty five, right? Run this thing in a tier one Axis Elite. Um, very California compliant setup, as you can see. Uh, run a Trigicon SRO and a, and a mod light on this guy. Um, this is my my baby, right? So this is uh, this is where I've settled that. Um, run a Spiderco box cutter, right? That's about that's about all it's worth. Uh, <laughs> run a mod light handheld as well. Um, you ever take a, a low light class, you will learn quickly what a quality light does or doesn't do. Uh, cell phone, obviously. I think everybody carries one of these stupid things these days. Um, and then a couple years ago, transitioned away from a wallet and now just carry a cool little carbon fiber money clip. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we, we have done ours like the past three episodes. So I think everyone knows what we carry by now. For sure. Unless, do you have any upgrades or changes? No, I don't have any current upgrades, Yeah, but soon, soon upgrades. Oh, we'll see. Soon upgrades. See in the I've, I've taken the, a few, a few tips from other pocket dumps here and, uh, yeah, I upgraded some, some stuff. So exciting maybe, stuff maybe the next batch i'll bring it all out cool um so yeah if you want to give a little background a little bio um a little bit about yourself yeah um look just an average dude right i run uh i run sales for a global technology manufacturer um kind of really got into the firearms game just right into covid oh like, never nice. really had a strong <laughs> firearms background um owned a couple guns did the the occasional you know desert shootout kind of thing every now and then uh but covid hit got out of the desert game i was big into to razors and dirt bikes and that whole nine yards and then uh found found the wonderful world of firearms <laughs> um so that's been a pretty pretty cool journey other than that just a husband and a and a, and a father so awesome yeah uh i i did not ex i didn't know like your background i would not have expected like <laughs> just that short amount of time based on seeing you shoot i yeah. know i've shot with you maybe once or twice um but obviously like seeing it on instagram and stuff like you're you made some progress quick. Yeah, so I'm I'm one of those obsessive people, right? Okay, you know, find a find a passion, and um, that's what it it becomes all about, right? Heck yeah. So I, I think that's one of kind of the things that links a lot of us together. Mm -hmm. um, pretty obsessive people, right? Def definitely <laughs> fixated on on getting better, and and when you are around people of a higher level, you know, I'm definitely drawn to to want to operate, you know, at a higher level. Yeah, I can see that too. Like you. You work out a lot like i just seen you post some stuff about like your your gym and your workouts and stuff and yeah it seems like you're very uh dedicated yeah. to everything that you do thanks so that's cool yeah um yeah and you kind of have to be like with firearms like if you go and fuck a drill up like it's gonna eat you up until you can get back out to the range and not fuck that up yeah <laughs> in the same way yeah i think it was like how like me and andy linked up we actually linked up over instagram i was trying to like sign up at our local range and they weren't there he was like well you know i'll just come down we can shoot together and i was like uh no you don't have to <laughs> totally glad you did so we hit it off and been friends ever since so that's awesome and that was like a little over a year ago yeah 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 because i'm on my second sign up with wrens <laughs> it's crazy yeah uh, another question we like to ask all our guests what do you think of the name tats and gats <laughs> um i mean look, it doesn't it doesn't affect me right i mean i, I think i've called tattoos at, at one stage or several times throughout my life tats right? yeah, yeah um definitely not a formal man by by any shape or form um so tats and gats kind of resonates with me I, I love tattoos uh i love guns uh, of all shapes and sizes so you know it was cool when lee told me yeah we're doing a podcast called tats and gats i think i was like, like hell yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah it's in your instagram name yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect yeah. There goes. There um kind of speaking to that what was your first tattoo oh man geez uh yeah definitely on the therapist couch for this one so my first tattoo was a tramp stamp right Sick. um you know really came from a, a an uber conservative you know family you know my mom single mom um just an amazing woman right but tattoos was one of those things that was just Jeez. super taboo right it was yeah. like that's what gangbangers and bikers have and you know if you get a tattoo you're you're destined for a life of of sin 
Um, it's true, by the way. Yeah, for I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely that definitely, that could. definitely became true. Um, <laughs> but I had a girlfriend, you know, way back when that, you know, really wanted to go get tattooed, right? So she kind of, she got a tramp stamp. She wanted me to get a tramp stamp. So, you know, I got the king of all tramp stamps and got a tribal tattooed on yes. my lower back. Yes. Um, just crossing it all out. What yeah, that know? was. Uh, How old are you? I was, I just turned 18. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah. Legal. You two legals. I was the only illegal tattooer. Yeah. Here, like, underage. Yeah. I waited until I was 18. Too. Do you still have it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been added to right now. It's got a big, big whole piece that surrounds it. So it's so, not just a tramp stamp. You know, good. it's nice. it's morphed kind of into a whole lower back tattoo. Um, but much like, you know, like firearms with tattoos with me, it kind of became something that became almost obsessive, right? It's, uh, it's a weird space in between my ears, you know, it doesn't, doesn't <laughs> shut up often. Um, and really the only couple times that it shuts up is, you know, look, getting tattooed, working out hard or shooting, you know, those are kind of the times where I find kind of serenity in the moment that turns down the volume yep. on the rest of the world and the yep. voice inside. Yeah. I might get that. Um, so did you get all you, yeah, and, and notice you have like sleeve, half sleeve or three quarter sleeve. Yep. Um, did you jump out the gate at 18 and get all those tattoos uh like pretty quickly or we spread out no it's spread out you know i got you know first two or three pretty quickly um mm -hmm. and then it settled into man if i'm going to put something that's not going to be on my body forever i would really want it to be you know something you know i'm not i'm not the guy that ever walked into a studio and just you know hey that piece of flash looks fucking cool let's let's get that tattooed on me you know everything kind of now when i look at it is is a point in life right and it all tells a story so uh, probably about 18 to 21 was slow. And then, you know, 21 till about 30 was pretty consistent Heck getting yeah. tattooed. Awesome. Are you uh, pretty covered on your legs and all that stuff as well? Yeah, or? full shin pieces. Uh, next will be my kneecaps. Um, really wanted to have just a traditional three-quarter sleeve. Um, so that's why this stopped. But ultimately, it'll finish out too because I got to get my son's name tattooed on me. Me uh, too. Chest plate, yeah. <laughs> rib plates, back's done. Nice. You know, yeah, pre pretty well good. Very Heck cool. Yeah. Um, Along those lines, what was your first firearm purchase? Wow. First, well, oddly enough, uh, first firearms purchase, man. Hopefully the ATF doesn't watch this one. Um, <laughs> well, if they saw the last episode, they're pissed. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I bought a, I bought an AK-74 for 150 bucks Let's at go. a uh, outdoor gun swap meet in Arizona after doing yeah, a job, right? That's a gnarly first gun. So I used to have, uh, I used to have a cool business and, and it took us all over the place and we were out in Arizona doing some work and we were kind of just driving back, right? And right before we get to the California border, there's just a bunch of guns being sold in a parking lot like yes so we pulled over and uh and me and my business partner at the time picked up a couple picked up a couple of firearms so that was my first official purchase um i had two guns that were gifted to me prior to that uh so i had a, a 410 shotgun uh that was gifted to me and then a, a taurus that was that was nickel plated taurus. taurus that was also gifted to me nice. you still have those yeah what yeah, was your first like official purchase pistol uh yeah so that was my glock 34 right that's a pretty and cool and that was uh probably about three years ago so again i kind of hawked all my desert stuff and was just kind of looking for a new hobby um and was kind of enamored by all the gucci glock builds yeah, right like all this. over Instagram. the agency and the Z yeah tag. oh yeah <laughs> so I, I wanted to build one of those and um just went balls to the walls figured out what the best optic was and trigger and barrel and all this crap that you put on a gun that does absolutely nothing for you um and then you know built this fifteen hundred dollar pistol and didn't have a fucking clue how to shoot you know? so yeah. it's like better go learn how to use this thing well uh that's a great transition into like literally the next question we have written down <laughs> what was your first official firearm class um who was it with and uh what was some of your takeaways yeah so it, it started when i went to go get my ccw um and i just gone to the range like make sure i could hit a target you know I understood basic side alignment principles um, went and took my CCW and was blown away with some of the people in that class and the <laughs> fact that they were going to pass and be able to carry, Heck right? Yeah. Conceal the public. Are so terrifying. Long. Yeah. So I went, I went and joined Renz, um, and, and met a guy who I'm not going to name, right? Cause it was a pretty unpleasant experience, you know, entered a class and just kind of was belittled in the class. Uh, had a lot of questions about why would you grip a gun that way? Why would you, you know, click bang and pin the trigger after a shot and, um, had the instructor call me out in front of the class, right? And Damn. say, you know, how long have you been shooting? I was like, well, fuck, I'm new. That's why I'm here. He's like, that's right. And I've been shooting my whole Ooh. life, so shut up. Ooh. Um, I and I went that. home after that day and kind of maybe thought firearms weren't for me, right? Maybe this wow. was, was not the thing for me because I struggled throughout the six-hour class, right? Just missing and the fundamentals he was teaching me how to apply didn't make sense in my head and, and didn't make sense to kind yeah. of some of the things I had heard from high-level shooters. So I was just bebopping around at Wrens again one day, and, and I hear this guy and the next bay over given just phenomenal instruction right just given all of the whys of how he's teaching 
Uh, I kind of look over and this dude's tattooed from head to toe, right side of the head, the hands, kind of like, who the fuck is character. this guy, right? <laughs> um, and after he wrapped up his lesson, I just walked over and introduced myself and, you know, just so happened to be Mark with First Defense. Um, so after that, I had a private lesson with him and then just took off after that. Brad. Yeah, he, he has a, a really good way of, like you said, connecting the why behind yeah. the, the what, you yeah. know, like that everything has a purpose and a reason. And a lot of instructors will do like what you said for your first experiences. Yep. Just no, no, this is the way, blah, blah, blah. And not explain yeah. like the why behind it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how my brain works, right? It's really mechanical, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not necessarily that I'm looking for somebody to tell me that this is the way, but here's the data behind why this exactly. way makes sense. And you can choose to apply it and see results, or you could try to do something differently and see if you can, you know, beat his way. And, um, look, I can't, I can't say enough good things about, about Mark, you know, yeah. the, the time he's invested in me, um, the personal instruction that he shared with me, you know, I wouldn't be a quarter of the shooter I am if it wasn't for that dude. So, you know, he's really been kind of the foundation of, of my shooting and what I apply. And, and look, I try to, to pay it forward now, right? I mean, that guy's invested hundreds of hours into me. Um, so anytime I can reach out to anybody like Lee, yeah. when he wanted to come out and shoot, you know, I'm look, I'm not going to charge you anything. If, if you're willing to come share your time with me. Um, I'll share with you what I know. That's awesome. I'm glad I did because that like year, looking back at that year, I was like, holy shit. People were like, I, I can't wait to get on your level. I was like, give yourself a year. Yeah. Like just truly dedicate yourself. Yep. And just like obsess over it. Let it come over you. Yeah. But like shout out to all the like pre GWAT instructors out there just like not learning new uh, instructions and just staying in the year they got out of the military. So <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> evolve, guys. Evolve. It, it's kind of interesting. I don't think there's many other things that you can get uh, to such a high level at in such a short amount of time. Yeah. You know, like I don't know, you said desert stuff. It's like, I'm not a dirt bike rider. I don't think in a year I could be at like a top level dirt bike rider. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'm a secret hidden <laughs> dirt bike talent, but probably not. But with firearms, it's just interesting to see that like so many people have progressed so much in such a short amount of time. Yeah. But uh, I also think it's, I don't want to take away from the amount of time you put in right. to it in that year. I yeah. know between the two of you, you guys are at Ren's a lot shooting. So yeah. And look, live fire is, is, really such a small fraction uh, of the time that I've invested into trying to get really proficient at this, right? I mean, I, I think there's an understated amount of value that goes into to dry fire, you know, and all the little facets that you can do with dry fire, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the last part of, of operating a firearm is the only thing you can't practice yeah. in dry fire, right? The, the actual exactly. bang part. Mm -hmm. um, but when you understand the basic principles of what you're trying to accomplish and understand what you're trying to see when you're accomplishing those things, um, the dry fire is so understated in our yep. community, right? And, and I feel like there's like this stigma and, and it's kind of going away, right? And again, because of social media, there's so many people that post about it. There's like this stigma of like, well, I don't, I don't dry fire. Or there's all these different people that say, oh, you don't ever press the trigger during dry fire. Well, maybe when you get to a certain level, yeah. that starts to make more sense. But I think in the beginning, for most people, there's a lot of value to understanding how your how your trigger works, right? And um, I got probably a hundred thousand trigger presses on this particular Glock, just trying to figure out where the wall is, what the brakes yep. like, how to find a quick reset. Um, again, all that is so understated, I think, in our community to to really developing quickly, right? Yep. If, mm -hmm. if you really want to make giant progress, you know, dry fire is is absolutely the way. What's uh What's some of your dry fire like regimen? Um, if someone is starting out, what's like the number one thing you'd recommend? Yeah. I mean, look, break it all down, right? Mm -hmm. Don't try to take, especially, you know, drawing from concealment on all at one time. You know, I mean, I spent weeks just working on how I grab my shirt mm -hmm. and how I'm going to clear my garment, you know, and then once I get consistent purchase on my shirt and being able to clear the garment efficiently, you know, then making a purchase on the firearm. Right. And so there's so much time for me that went into just lifting the shirt and putting my hand on the gun. Yeah. You know, and that thing's never even coming out of the holster yet. And it's, it's funny, right? Cause I try to keep a lot of those videos just to look back, yeah. you know, and, and it's funny to really <laughs> see where I started and how clunky and awkward it was. <laughs> um, but again, right. It's, it's like anything, if you can be dedicated and you can break it down and you can stay consistent, there's so much progress that's made so quickly. Yep. And that, mm. and that's the biggest rewarding, you know, really part of, of the firearms community is, is how quick you can kind of get to that, that upper middle level. There's like a direct correlation between what you put in and what you see. It's oh, like 100%. an immediate, like, yeah. 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 And nobody yeah. really sees like the behind the scenes stuff. Like, you know, people are going to maybe post their highlight reels from the range. No one's going to like the hours of dry fire that goes home, you know, yep. like, no one's going to post it. Like you said, just dry fire repping, grabbing your yeah. shirt yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, that's not sexy or cool no or way. fun or whatever, but yeah. like super necessary. Yeah. Well, and it's just too like, 
you know, I kind of heard you guys talk about it on the first episode, like as it relates to, to tattoos and how much information exists out there. That's one of the things I recommend to everybody is go do your research. Because yep. I got a box of probably like two thousand dollars worth of shitty holsters yep. <laughs> <laughs> that had i not just like fallen in the rabbit hole of like oh that holster looks cool i'll buy that one and actually like looked at people and asked people questions of what works for them um you know it would have saved me it would have saved me a lot of time yeah you know? for sure shout out to tier one yeah big time <laughs> i uh total side note but you talking about like clearing the garment for uh so the the guy that's going to be on the next episode guy i worked with my mentor heck tattoo uh we used to scare each other at the tattoo shop all the time it's like our favorite thing to do is try to scare someone and videotape it so one day i'm walking back from taking the trash out he was inside the bar which i definitely didn't expect and like popped out of the door filming me and scared me and as he did my left hand grabbed my shirt like i didn't go further than that but it was totally subconscious and he was like what why did you grab your yeah, shirt like that? Because like, the next step was lifting the shirt. and Like <laughs> my brain just went to like that right yeah. away. It was, it was interesting. Well, and I think, look, that's, <laughs> sorry, that's heck, huge, I almost shot you. <laughs> look, that's a huge part of, I think, you know, anybody who conceal carries, you know, it, it should almost be subconscious. Right. And yeah. um, look, I'm not prior military. I'm not law enforcement. Right. So I don't have kind of this foundational so he knows training how to shoot. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have like this. <laughs> giant foundation of, of firearms experience but you know one of the things that that mark says you know is in a situation like a high stress situation you're going to default to your lowest level of training yeah. now ideally for me i want my lowest level of training to be so far above anything that i'm exactly. going to encounter um that look i don't want to call it an unfair advantage because i'll take any unfair advantage i can get but i want my reaction to be something that is yeah. is effortless right yeah. and incredibly efficient um, and I hope that day never comes, right? But yeah, again, that's it's I like putting it your seatbelt on in your car. You don't you don't click that thing on because you're planning on getting in an accident. You, yeah. you put that thing on because you want to be prepared for for the unknown. 100. Absolutely. Was there ever a time in a, a class uh, that you felt like over your head, um, maybe a more advanced class, like I got to dial it back or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Um, you know, again, Mark, you know, kudos to Mark, right? This guy's, you know, the master of kind of like subconsciously pushing me out of my comfort zone. Um, and I bought my first AR, right? And I didn't, fuck, dude, I didn't know what to do with a rifle, right? I just figured out how to shoot a handgun. And now all of a sudden <laughs> I got this fucking rifle platform. Um, and he gave me like a 30 minute crash course on how to shoot an AR at Renz. And then two days later, I was in a, a high level rifle pistol Hell class, <laughs> you know, dynamic and, and pistol carbine. Yeah. Dynamic yeah. pistol oh, carbine. Um, yeah. And holy shit, you know, that first hour, like I, <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Dude, if you've shot before, that's a humbling <laughs> yeah. class. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You're like what's holdover? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely way out of my league on that one. Um, just recently actually went back and did that class again, you know, now that I, I yeah, have a good did, foundation in that. Together. And, and did, look, I felt like I did well, you yeah. know, I felt like I held my own and, and performed at a level that I was, uh, I was happy with. Um, and again, I'll do it again just cause you yeah. know, the idea is to keep improving, but yeah, that was the class that really was an eye opener. You know, number one, I don't train outside waistband. So that class is all outside waistband, yeah. you know, had very, I mean, I probably had less than a hundred rounds behind a rifle at that point in time. Wow. Uh, and spent the next eight hours kind of just, you know, head spinning, wondering what the <laughs> fuck is going on. I, I didn't plan on asking this, but you do bring it up. I'm curious why, why not on the outside waistband? Um, you know, look for me, it's just not, it's not practical. Right. And no knock at all on people who train that way. Right. I mean, I, I'm not one to, to judge anybody, especially when it comes to, to how they train. Um, I think any training is, is better than no training, but again, I, I carry this thing, you know, almost daily with me. Yep. Um, so if that's how I'm going to carry uh, I believe in train how you would carry or train how you would fight, right? That's something that I say to people a lot of the time. So, um, you know, there's not, I don't really foresee ever a moment where a situation arises and I'm like, hang on, give throw me, the battle give me about five fucking minutes. <laughs> Let me go yeah. get my fucking battle gear on real quick. Yeah. Um, and, you know, look, Lee and I have even had a conversation around, you know, do you think there's a practical application to be able to throw on a plate carrier uh, while carrying appendix, right? And so I've literally tried to go home and replicate this in dry fire. Uh, and it's not very possible. Let's just say it that mm. way, right? Even with the shirt tucked yeah. behind the gun, uh, I really have to lean back and get the plate carrier out of the way to be able to appendix draw. So, you know, unfortunately, if there was ever a time where, you know, I had to grab a rifle, um, I would have my appendix rig on and I yep. most likely wouldn't put a plate carrier on just yeah. knowing that it, it would hinder me. It's interesting because like the most likely scenario, like you said, it would be a concealed situation. Yep. Um, 
So I think most people spend most of their time training outside the waistband because it's funner, it looks yeah. cooler, it's faster, all these things. But you're training for the smallest percentage yep. like, like outcome or likelihood that you'll use it versus all the times that you're carrying concealed. Yep. Right. That was uh, totally me a year ago. Then I had to link up with Andy and start getting some inside waistband stuff. But it's more like a first wave, like safe shit does hit the fan, go into this, do have time, I'm gearing up because, you know, bullets hurt i don't yeah. want to get hit but <laughs> then i'll go outside of waistband but this is the instant first line of defense right here so yeah you know something uh i just was thinking about the other day totally uh kind of off topic uh when we do drills right uh with outside the waistband we always start with like your hand kind of cupping the bottom of the holster oh unless you know the cheat code <laughs> yeah but i was thinking legal cheat code realistically if you're wearing a battle belt most likely you'd be in a law enforcement situation or you'd be like shit hits the fan scenario mm -hmm. and you have your all your kit on you're either going to be drawing from probably hands up here mm -hmm. or your hands already going to be like on your gun like pretty prepped i don't see a lot of situations where your hands actually be going to be cupped under the holster and i know that might i mean i just a random thought i had the other day that's but, why um, I, you know preach like transitions yeah because if you're in full kit like that your primary is your rifle yep your right. pistol is like your last resort secondary but why do we cup because we're trying to beat the clock it's all about the clock yeah. so, but it's not clock. a realistic training situation it's not, but it's more like transitions like get your transitions down it's like go from rifle to pistol and save your life so yeah and that's you know that's a good point right that's another thing that i see a lot of especially at the range we we train out there's a lot of guys that are always just fully kitted out right and it's kind of like the do it for the gram mentality yeah. right they're gonna go out there and take pictures and look fucking rad but i've been there <laughs> um but look at one thing i don't see them work on is is transitions mm -hmm. you know and if you do see a transition it's it's really clumsy it's really fumbly uh it's really awkward but you know kind of as lee stated look if you're fully kitted out the, the rifle is is the primary weapons platform right and oh, yeah. um you know i posted an instagram post a while back just to kind of create a little bit of a debate um, and nobody really took the bait, unfortunately, because I was looking forward to it. But I was asking the question of, is it practical to run appendix um, and a rifle at the same time? You know, and do you train that? Do you actually train transitioning from a rifle platform to an appendix platform? Because uh, if shit really were to hit the fan for me again, I, I would want to grab my rifle. Yeah. And if I did in that event, I most likely would have my appendix kit already on. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the firearms industry going? Wow. Uh, interesting question, right? Especially for, for a dude like me, that's been in it for, for such a short period of time. Uh, you know, look, I think it's at a fork in the road, to be honest with you, you know, there's going to continue to be this, uh, mentality of collect and hoard, but don't train. And, and I see a really growing mentality of like train your ass off. Right. Yeah. I do see this, you know, it's funny, right. And I'll, and I'll tangent a little bit here. I, I fucking hate on social media when I see people like make comments about California and then the response is always like fucking move. Mm. Right. Um, I think it's super cowardly, right? Yep. For that to be your reaction to move out of the state, right? Rather than, than stay here and, and defend what's right. Um, there's too many of these people that act like they're constitutionalists or they believe in freedom or they call themselves Americans, but their gut reaction was like, well, I'm just going to go move to a place where I don't feel oppressed. Bye. Um, <laughs> and you know, my rebuttal to them is always like, well, you fucking pay taxes. You have a driver's license. Like you've already voluntarily yep. oppressed yourself. Right. And so clearly you're not one of the guys that I want on my team. If mm -hmm. shit were to hit the fan, um, so where do I see the industry going? You know, look, I think, again, I think training is key, right? And I think seeking out quality training, uh, and immersing yourself in incredibly stressful situations and pulling yourself out of the comfort zone is really paramount to growth in, in anything you do in life. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's still this radical mentality of like, I'm just going to go buy every fucking gun and every single caliber, <laughs> and I'm going to have 17 safes and I know how to operate none of my firearms whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, you know, look, there's, there's a portion of our 2A community that is becoming loot drops. Um, and there's a portion of our 2A community that's becoming, you know, really well-trained and, and it starts to become a close knit family, right? I mean, some of uh, my better friendships are formed through through this community and and socal man shout out to socal shooters yeah um there's a bunch of badass dudes that that are in this community that that i'm glad to be a part of i get i get dm from time to time uh other tattooers or people that are into um firearms and they're like why are you in california and i'm like you have no idea one i've had my ccw for seven years yeah like i've been legally carrying uh and two there are some phenomenal shooters yeah. the community of of shooting in southern california is one of the strongest yep. um yeah and it, it's really not i mean I, i'm not saying california is great but there are some some benefits to it you know you look at our resources you look at our natural landscape yeah. our, 
the weather. Everyone says the weather, but uh, look, look, it's it's all of that, man. Right? I mean, where I live, and, and I kind of like to tell people because a lot of times, especially in my my area of work, people are like, "Where do you live?" And I'm like, "It's hard to explain." But <laughs> let's put it this way: I'm an hour from anything. I'm an hour from the snow. I'm an hour from the beaches. I'm an hour from downtown. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. just close to nothing. And and ideally, I kind of like it that way, yep. right? There, there's some peaceful serenity to it. But um, look, California doesn't bother me. This is where my family is. This is where I grew up. I mean, I got a giant San Diego tattoo on my leg. The last thing I'm going to do is uproot my kids and drag my wife away from her family and be further away from my family yeah. um, just because I don't agree with some of the gun laws that exist. You know, yeah. and, and again, to credit Mark, um, one of the things he says pretty often is, you know, how much is your life worth? Right. So if I'm going to let some kind of law limit what I view as the value of my life and my loved one's exactly. life, moving out of state's not going to change nope. that. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's definitely valid reasons to move out of state. I think just to escape California's gun laws is is not. No. Because there's gun laws everywhere. There are, and they're coming everywhere. Yeah. They're not like, it's not stopping at California. You're just prolonging the inevitable by moving away, you know? Well, and again, right? Go back to the social media thing. I I don't know that I've seen a dude on social media that can run a fully auto weapon proficiently, right? I don't think anybody can. So do I need to move out of the state so that I can buy a fully automatic firearm no i don't need to i can go train and be at a higher level and be able to shoot more efficiently and proficiently uh than these dudes that once again are just filling up safes in their garage full auto is fun but it's not practical practical exactly yeah it's just it's cool and then you're like okay let me go back to the semi-auto where i can actually hit stuff accurately all the time yeah i just i just went to splits people (laughs) rahagi's with a a buddy of mine he's a, a swat officer uh for a local pd he had a fully auto suppressed ar and it's like you know we're gonna shoot it and i was like yeah and like one <laughs> mag and my face is full of gas and i was like that was not fun like i couldn't control yeah. it well it was like you know it was just yeah. gas in your face from the suppressor it was just i was like okay was, yeah yeah that's what everyone thinks like cans like having hush puppies on there it's like dude your gun is dirty afterwards yeah like insanely dirty uh what's your most meaningful tattoo you have oh wow I know you said you have San Diego. Um, you know, look, it's it's hard to point to just one, right? Uh, there's some tattoos on me that that came from some really rough times. Mm. Um, I mean, my my most meaningful tattoo, hands down, my daughter, right? I mean, that's 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 everything, you okay. know. And I can't I can't sit here and talk too much about her without putting myself in a weird emotional state, yeah, for sure. Uh, but that's why it's right there. This, this was the first tattoo I got that was incredibly visible, you know. And I got into the mindset of like, look, if I'm gonna have a tattoo on my yeah. arm and it's a heart with my daughter's name in it, and you got a fucking problem with that. You're not somebody I want yeah, to associate exactly. with anyways, right? And and probably close behind that is this guy. Um, you know, another really, really difficult time in life, right? And so I, I got St. Jude tattooed on me because he's a patron saint of lost causes. Um, and it was kind of like, hey, man, just remember, like, you're never a lost cause, mm. right? It's never over yeah. until, until you can't do anything else about it. Um, and it's oddly enough, probably one of the most controversial tattoos I have on me too, right? Because mm. people either look at it and see Jesus um, and they freak out, right? Because, <laughs> oh, if you're uber christian or uber catholic you're not supposed to get tattooed which that's easily dispelled yep. Yep. um or you will find the occasional person that actually knows it's saint jude um and that elicits a pretty vivid reaction too right like why the fuck would you put that guy in your body right it's yeah. like you clearly don't know the story of saint jude if that's going to be your reaction so tattoos for me are cool in a way it's kind of like a, a suit of armor yeah because yeah. if you're going to judge me because of some color that i got on my skin again you're not you're not someone i want to associate with Exactly. I forget I have them all the time. Yeah. Like uh, I remember when like pandemic and the mask thing and my wife and I were talking about like going into grocery stores and I was like, dude, I never wear mine in the grocery store. I never had anyone say anything. She's like, yeah, it's look at you. Like yeah. you're covered in tattoos, yeah. you're uh, you know, but she's like, when I try to not wear it, people like yell at me. Um, but yeah, I forget all the time. It's like a tad bit of intimidation factor until I open my mouth. I think yeah. I look intimidating. Yeah. Then I, and like, Oh, that guy's a teddy bear. Never mind. <laughs> so well, it's until they get to know you and you're an <laughs> asshole. Like that thing that we said, you're like, look, look, look at this meme. This is us. It's like, he's like the approachable, nice guy. And like, I'm like the not one, but then you get to know us. And like, I'm the nice guy and you're the dude. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it's <That's> so true. <laughs> it's such a weird culture flip for me. Cause you know, I, I really came up as, as an electrician, you know, that's, that's kind of where my foundation of life was done. built. Um, and in that world, in the trades, look, it's, that's just the way it is. Everybody's tattooed and yeah. they're hard workers and everybody kind of has that common bond. Uh, but now I'm kind of a, a big dude in the corporate world. Yeah. Right. And so there's Killing a lot of people who got it. to know me, um, you know, and 
dress shirts and slacks and sport coats. And then they get on the golf course with me and to watch their faces, right? When they see full sleeve legs and arms <laughs> and they're like, guy. dude, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's always interesting to, to watch kind of that stereotype unfold, right? Where people think yeah. they know who I am from my work experience with them. Um, and then they get to know me on a personal level and, and now it's cool, right? Cause now people know me as that guy and you know, I'm kind of unique in, yeah. in the space I operate in. Um, and it's, it's just very welcome, right? So it's, it's cool to see people kind of be able to remove that stigma from their head that hey, and, uh, if you're tattooed, you're and climbing the corporate ladder. You want to shout out your like recent big achievement you just got? Shit, man. So yeah, so I just got to, to promote it to senior vice president of, of sales for North America. Wow. Let's go. Right? So it's uh, it was a big deal. Um, I take it very serious. I've worked for this company for 13 years. Awesome. Um, so for them to give me the opportunity to really be the guy that, that leads the charge now, um, it's, it's yeah. pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> pretty Red. cool, man. I'm killing it. Um, oh, shoot. I lost my, uh, there was something I was going to touch on there. Oh, I got a question for you. Okay. Is there an instructor other than anybody you've ever taken that you want to go train with? Yeah, for sure. Donovan, right? Point one tactics. A hundred percent. I mean, um, Again, the way that guy teaches, the level that he shoots at, uh, the yep. performance that he expects in terms of performance on demand, um, that's a guy that, yeah, just totally had my eyes on. Yep. I, I would same here fall I, out I of tried. my skin. I tried to get in his class. He had one just recently. Yeah. And, and it, it filled up in seconds. In seconds. Yeah. So I, I would love, I mean, look, you know, that kind of dream Instagram invite, yep. right? As you get a DM from like the tier one guys or Donovan or something like, hey, man, you want to come shoot at Defender Ranch? Yes. Like, yes. shout out to Defender Ranch. Yeah. Like, I would be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, um, yeah th those are again, uh, you know, these guys that I watch that that just are really are practical shooters, right? That, that just really, really teach incredible high level efficiency. Yeah. Um, that's, the, that's the stuff that catches my attention. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually rode with Mark to uh, RX Range Day and coming back, he asked me that. Yeah. He's like, who, who, who do you want to train with? And yeah. I was like Donovan and then Jason Fala. Yeah. Those would be the two that I would do. But like, that's like a whole thing. Cause Jason's like a five day block. Like right. you got to go travel, travel. Yep. He's like, I was like, there's really like, who's in SoCal, like other than like you that yep. I could learn more from than you. He was like, it's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, where do you go from there? Cause like we went to RX range. They shout out to Rick from Achilles heel tactical. Well, I went out there and I crushed it. I failed the man card. I'll get that though. But like everything, else, every other competition, I just crushed it. Yeah. Like I got redemption for, that's why I dedicated that patch to you. I got redemption on that <laughs> rifle one, one R five. And I was just like, yep. Yeah. It was just on just money. As soon as that reload happened, I just like, all right, I'm taking my time sights. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It was, was like, beautiful. Yes. And that cadence on those second yes. five, man, they, they just, you just knew when but you I hear just, that cadence, you know, like, but I just knew I just like, I didn't rush it. So I, I didn't want to miss a shot. Yeah. I didn't want to, uh, cause I'd done that before where I, I ran that drill low fours and left so much time on the clock and missed. And I was yeah. like, I can't do this again. When we were out at that, like quarry spot uh, that kept yeah. happening. Um, for those that don't know, do you want to explain what a one R five? Uh, the, it's with the rifle. It's a uh, mark from first defense. He has a uh, performance standard drill where it's uh one shot. You reload. And you put five more shots down at 25 yards on season steel. So we got to do it in under five seconds. And I was able to pull it off in 4.36. I've done that same drill 4.33 and I, I missed a shot. So it's haunted me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy. It's no, not easy. Dude, like, I was the only, I only one that day it. to, to pass it. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Kevin. Uh, he ran it in like four around roughly the same time, but missed one. So he knows he's in the same boat. I was <laughs> yeah. Yeah, motivation. But then uh, Chris uh, sh uh, shoot dot something who's a uh, Rick's camera guy. He was right there in the mix, so he got footage of that. I know, I so saw that's that. Gonna be super cool uh, that, him, that, that on the Instagram out. video. Him like right up. I was in like, there. no pressure. Everybody filming. <laughs> Mark there with a timer, like a professional photographer is like on me. I'm like, Whew. all right, you hear me? Like if you guys watch that video, <laughs> beep, and it's just on. I was like, yes. Um, I, I, there's like two more. I want to like, make sure we get to in time. Um, so one is, have you ever had an ND or witnessed, uh, something unsafe on the range that made you g give you the heebie jeebies, <laughs> man. Yeah. You know, look, there's several times that rends, right? There's one time that almost, you know, kind of almost started somewhat of physical altercation, getting flagged by, uh, by a guy twice. Right. First yeah, time, nice. you know, look, gun, gun was slide lock, right? So clearly it was empty, but again, you know, first rule of firearms, right? Treat every gun as if it was loaded. Um, you know, don't point anything you don't intend to destroy. And this, this motherfucker just, you know, <laughs> gun goes to slide lock, not wearing a holster, just spins, uh, and just 
just completely flags me, right? So, hey, man, like, please don't do that. You know, when you're done shooting, you know, put your gun in a safe direction kind of shit. Um, and he gets kind of lippy, right? Well, you can see that it's out of ammo, right? It's in slide lock. Like, look, dude, I don't give a shit, right? We're sharing a range together, you know? Put your gun down at the ground or point it up at the sky. Don't fucking point it at mm-hmm. me. Um, comes back out probably about 10 or 15 minutes later. And this time, you know, I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't know if, uh, if he ran out of, out of ammo and the gun didn't go to slide lock or if he had, you know, kind of a, a hang fire or something. Uh, but gun wasn't in slide lock and did the same thing, right? Spun at me, completely flagged me, right? Flags the four people sitting behind him as he turns to like say, Hey, the gun's not working anymore. Uh, and at that point in time, you know, we, we definitely exchanged <laughs> some, some heated words, right? And it yeah. got to the point where it was like, look, you really want to fucking have a problem while we're both carrying firearms, yeah. like, You're like beat it, dude, <laughs> you're going to lose. <laughs> um, and the second one, I kind of, that's almost a chuckle, right? I, I actually put together, um, a firearms class with Mark, with, with my direct reports, right? The guys who report to me at my work, um, pretty much everybody in that group had somewhat firearms or said they had certain level of experience <laughs> with firearms. Um, and one of the guy gets out there and, and Mark just in his basic fundamental class, you know, make sure you know how to load and make ready a firearm and then how to, sh- you know, unload and show clear. Uh, and this guy was using a handgun that he wasn't really all that familiar with, right? Just, just hadn't spent a lot of time behind it. Um, hands are trembling, right? It just <laughs> from the pressure of being around a bunch yeah. of people he knows yeah. holding the live firearm and he goes to unload and show clear. And in the moment of, you know, trying to rack the slide, he hadn't dropped the mag first yet. His finger slips off the side of the gun and Indy's around downrange. Right? Ooh, that's a good one. And Lisa was downrange. Yeah. Now there yeah. were seven of us kind of, he was the last one in the group to do this. There were seven of us that were kind of watching him. Um, and it's it ripples through everybody, right? Everybody kind of like, Oh, what the fuck? Now Mark doesn't move, doesn't fucking flinch just calm cool and collected like it always is like it's okay man like this is this is why we keep the gun pointed in a safe direction this kind of shit happens and we're on lunch break and mark and i are kind of off the side talking and i'm like hey so that's clearly happened to you a bunch like you didn't move at all he goes nope first fucking time (laughs) oh really (laughs) wow Wow. yeah crazy yeah um uh okay so one of the our favorite questions to ask uh and we'll if we have time after that question we'll you know jump around on some other stuff but i, I really like getting to this one um i don't know why but I, um, <laughs> it, it it's a good one because the answer from everybody is pretty amazing yeah it, it is um okay so what do you think is the greatest threat facing the united states uh today or in the near future oh yeah it's a good one damn um <laughs> man it, it's the demasculization or the confusion of society right um our our society was was is really based off of 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 masculinity right and i, I hate hearing people say toxic masculinity because the last thing true men are is toxic look there's fucking toxic anything right yeah. there's toxic women there's toxic men there's toxic of any any race that's out there right and so i don't know why there's been such this focus on tearing down the strong man and, and tearing down the strong family and the values that are associated with family and you know look i'm not a very religious person but tearing down of, of religious beliefs and constructs and and kind of like just making this radically confused society of what i'll call fucking mush and lazy people mm-hmm. right it's it's this mentality of entitlement and instant gratification and you know people just aren't willing to to put in the work at anything anymore and and look lee and i share a, a saying right progress over perfection right it's not about perfection you're not going to ever get there there's no such thing as being perfect but you know the 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 path to to perfection or the path to progress is 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 on the road of obsession right, right. i mean you, you have to have a a, a purpose there has to be something that makes you want to get out of bed every day right and, and look i don't care what that is if, if your get out of bed is for your kids or your wife or your job or for yourself you know there has to be a purpose and it's it's super strange to see the greatest country that ever existed on the face of this fucking planet turn into what it's turning into and, and the really people is. that are so passive and being okay with it you know and and not defending their rights or standing up for what they believe and uh look i hate i hate politics right and 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 you know if we have the time to really get into it not that i want to um i'm not a republican or a democrat yeah. right that's that's like asking me what my favorite fucking sports team and you know shit i don't i'm a padre fan and you're a yankee fan and we fucking hate each other because it's east coast versus west coast there is this really big problem in this country where we're believe or taught to believe that if you're not what i am i should fucking hate you yeah 
And we've lost our ability to have a conversation and we've lost our ability to hear other people's thoughts and understand what makes them tick. And um, I love to hear people who have com conflicting views to mine, yeah. right? Why, why do you feel that way? Maybe I'm going to get exposed to something I don't know about and maybe that opens my eyes. And, um, you know, I throw a lot of people on their head, right? Because they, they want to talk politics. Well, you must be a staunch Republican. <laughs> well, really, <laughs> I'm not, that, right? That There's that, huge yeah. chunks of me that are very socialistic. I believe in fucking highways. I want the police to come when I call 911. Yep. I want fucking EMT to roll if I have a fucking heart attack. So there is a part of society that I believe needs that. But again, like, let's strip away the labels and like, look, let's look at it for what we are. And we're humans and we're Americans. And there should be pride in that and making this country great. And there's not right, and there's this radical growth of uh, of of mental issues, right? Mental health problems that are not yeah, being addressed, and just this confused generation. And you know, unfortunately, I, Lee, you got three kids, you got to raise in it. I got you know two kids, I got to raise in it. Got two. Yeah. You got two kids, you got to raise in it. And so, look, I think it's a time right where where us as men have to be willing to kind of take a stand and say, "Fuck enough is enough, man. Yep. You're you're not touching my kids." You know, you're not teaching them shit that I don't believe in. Um, and at the end of the day, I, I'm one of those guys like, hey, man, if you don't believe in what I believe in, I still want to sit down with you. You call me for help. I want to come help you. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really the problem that this country's facing right now is we've lost that kind of sense of, hey, we're all Americans, right? And we all share in the responsibility of making this a fucking phenomenal country, right? So that's, uh, that's a deep question, man. That was yeah. a great answer. Though. Great answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, there? Uh, uh uh, when you were talking about the guy flagging you and, and I, one of the, the things that stuck out to me is like, you said something to him about mm. it. Right. Uh, and I, I, I know it seems pretty obvious, but there's so many people these days that are so afraid to say anything to anyone, yeah. uh, at the risk of causing a conflict or, you know, offending someone, um, like just yesterday, this neighbor down the street, uh, my kids ride, you know, learning to ride bikes. We live on a cul-de-sac. They're in and out. He like flies in, flies out super fast and almost, you know, if I didn't stop my daughter, you know, she would have rode out, he would have hit her. So he comes back and, uh, I just walked up to his window and like, I'm not starting to fight. I'm not yelling at him. I just go, Hey man, I don't know if you know me. I'm Alex. I'm your neighbor. Right. I started it there. I, go, yeah. I don't think you meant anything by it. I don't even think you were aware that you did, but you're driving like super fast and we have two little kids. They have two little yeah. kids. They have three little kids. All of them are learning. And he's like, He's like, I'll, I'll be more aware, man. Yeah. And I was like, cool. cool like it didn't have yeah. to be a conflict, but like so many people would rather than have maybe an uncomfortable conversation mm -hmm. being direct, they'd rather call the cops on him yeah. or do something like that. And it's like, you got to be able to like have uncomfortable direct conversations with people. But and, that like stems from what Andy was saying about the masculine man. That's what I, yeah. Well, that's what reminded me of it. Most yeah. guys are afraid to do that. Like we'll approach in a gentle manner, but like in the back of our mind, that business side's always there. Case, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. In case yeah. they come back <laughs> at it sideways, then it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The most, second that most uh, guys like that aren't like that, so they don't. Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. Well, and that's yeah. look. That's part of the problem, right? Yep. Is like people are so fucking comfortable now, yep. right? And they're so worried about being uncomfortable. And I think I'm kind of the exact opposite. Like, look, I'd rather be uncomfortable and grow than be comfortable and lazy and just complacent to the world that's going on around us. And and I don't know. I think that's part of the biggest problem is people don't know what it's like to be uncomfortable anymore. Mm -hmm. And they have so little experience in that arena that when they get put in an uncomfortable position, yeah. the reaction is wild, yeah. right? I can attest to that because, you know, I'm getting pulled out of my comfort zone, like meeting you, meeting you. I'm like real, try to be reserved and quiet just because, you know, the violent past, I just try to just keep to myself now. And, you know, like Instagram, my face was blurred forever, but now I'm coming out and like, you guys are very well-spoken individuals and, you know. I'll get there one day on your guys' level, but you know, <laughs> I think do, you're getting there, doing man. this podcast in the beginning. I, I, I text him about, it. I was like, dude, going out of the comfort zone big time here. <laughs> He's like, I'm proud of you, man. I was like, thanks. Dude. Yeah. 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 You know, and I think that's the other thing, right? That we're kind of losing, right? Is the encouragement, right? It, it, there's nothing wrong with being a, a strong emotional male, right? Yeah. There's this whole stigma that like you can't show emotion and you know, it's weird. I'll, I'll be 45, you know, in a couple of weeks and, you know, I'm more comfortable with my emotions than I've ever been, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not worried about it. You know, it's not something that I feel like, Hey, if, again, if you're going to judge me, then fuck you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you be in my circle, you know, but at the end of the day, if you're in my circle, I'm going to show you who I am. My true colors all you the know? time. Yeah. I think it's so important. Like text your friends Yeah. when you are struggling, when you have something hard going on, like I do not hold back. I'll text them. Hey, like just last night, not to go off topic, I had knee surgery in July, 
full recovery just literally three days ago got the stamp of approval from my doctor to like you can surf and run and do all these things again i slipped and fell last night Damn. barbecuing and landed with my bad knee folded under my whole body and i just text my my boys like that fucking sucked yeah. like all that work yeah. just like all right i don't know if i'm back at square one i don't know if i need another surgery now i don't know if i like wrecked it or if it's fine but uh <laughs> but yeah but then we we come in with concern, but yet we roast the shit out of you. Oh, immediately. Like, it's like, <laughs> and that's what, but that, it's a, a form oh, of support that yeah. I think, but, but don't just sit there in silence yeah. when you're struggling, oh, like reach out to your friends. And yeah. if you have a friend that you think is struggling, reach out to them. Um, I think that's, that's something that, like you said, being a strong man doesn't mean you're not emotional, right. you're not in tune with that, but you can't go it alone either. Yeah. You know? no. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think we're close on time. We've got a few minutes yeah. left. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, anything you want to add, uh, any final statements, social media, all that stuff. That's, yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I'm not a giant social media guy, right? So I don't know. Oh, he's going to be though. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. I, I really appreciate you guys having me on this podcast, right? It's super cool to be a part of something that, that I see is, is probably becoming a pretty big deal. Um, you know, look, you know, plug Lee, right? Dude, just a fucking, just out of this world friend, right? Super lucky that, Trying uh, to be. That I got him in my life now, you know, huge plug to, to Mark with First Defense. That's another just uh, guy that's, you know, become a brother, right? Oh, not, yeah. not just a friend. Um, Nick, he's out there. I don't know if he's going to listen, but that's just oh, another Nick's dude listening. that. He was at my house. We were yeah, talking about that's it. just yeah, another yeah. dude that's kind of, you know, fell under the circle. That's just another quality guy, yeah. right? So, you know, outside of that, uh, um, again, just appreciative of the time and, and getting a chance to be here. Awesome, man. It was a great one. Yeah. Heck yeah. Really appreciate you making the track down here and yeah. being a part of it. Thank Probably you. going to be on the highlight request reel to come back for another episode. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're yeah. going to have a few of those. Awesome, cool. man. Well, I'll join you guys anytime. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah.